question, guys. If you had to stuff your entire life into one bag, could you do it? Could you figure out what the hell you're gonna leave behind? You gonna leave firearms behind? Family possessions, memorabilia, your laptop, your iPad. What are you gonna do? Just leave all your earthly possessions behind and put your entire life into one bag? If that's the case, then what the hell are you gonna take? You're definitely not gonna wanna leave home without your primary weapon, right? You're probably gonna wanna bring a sidearm too. And then you're gonna need to bring ammo and mags to feed all that. Probably gonna need a chest rig. How much water are you gonna bring? How much food are you gonna bring? You're going off into the unknown. So is two weeks of food enough until you can possibly sustain yourself living off the land? The list goes on the questions never end, guys. And this kind of stuff used to drive me insane until I figured out that there is no magical inch bag solution. There is no solution, no inch bag build that is going to enable you to fit everything you need inside one bag. You know, you're not gonna end up like going down the road with this giant pack on your back, pulling this giant buggy of this cart of all these possessions. Um, it, it's, just, it's just not feasible. You have to look at the inch bag like you do any other build, put in your survival set foundation, and then from there you add on redundancy to extend that survival timeline. But like any other bag, it doesn't matter, okay? If it's a bug out bag, inch bag, 24 hour bag, that bag has to be customized for your experience, your knowledge, your skill sets, and the environment that you feel that you will be operating in. So we all love gear, right? We're all gear whores inside. You know it, I know it. So I have my prized possession to show you guys. I've waited years to do this inch bag build specifically because I needed the perfect pack. So we're gonna start with that. And then I'm just gonna show you a few highlights of gear that I have. I'm not gonna get into this big thing of like, oh, here's my hygiene kit. Here's my toothbrush. Here's this, here's my multi-tool. That shit gets boring and I know it. So we're just gonna have a look at the bag, go through some highlights. And then maybe later on, if time permits, we'll maybe talk about some hypothetical inch bag scenarios. So let's get started. Guys, honestly, this is the true star of the video, the XO Mountain Gear K2 3500. Hands down, the lightest, toughest, most capable pack I've ever owned. Probably why it's a favorite among special forces, through hikers, and big game hunters. So, let's have a look at my loadout. I've worked really hard to ensure that I make maximum usage of all the space and organizational features this pack offers, which, honestly, are quite a few. The first feature about this pack, which I think is really cool, is the fact that it is expandable in size. So you can start out with a minimum size, all compressed down of 3,500, and then it expands all the way out to the size that you basically see it now, which is 7,000 CI. It actually contracts and expands. So that's a really cool feature, and it makes it really flexible, so you can carry any load you want in it, and it's not a big deal, even though it's a full-size pack. On each side of the pack is this gigantic pocket which is big enough you can slide a rifle down here a tripod i put my compact bow down here but anyways um yeah it's just huge and it also has this little hanger right here for a water bladder at the bottom there is a angled elastic pocket and it has this angle on it so when you have the pack on it's very easy to reach in here and get something what such as a water bottle the 3500 features what is called a floating lid, and basically all that means is it's detachable. So and this one secures right about here with this buckle, right? So if I want to actually remove the lid, I just unbuckle it from both sides. And then here in the back are two other attachment points and I can remove the lid completely and not even use it. So, you know, that would be an option if I had a lot less gear in this bag and I just, you know, using this roll top design, I roll it all down like this, buckle it into place and don't even need the lid and I'm taking up a lot more space and saving weight in the process. But with this build out, obviously I'm maximizing all the space in this bag. So I am using the floating lids. See here, we got stormproof zipper. Heavy duty, you know, this is, these poles are great because you can use them with gloves or whatever, it's super easy to hook into and use. And here it's just, you know, this big open compartment. There is what they call a stash pocket. And this is attached via Velcro right here. And, you know, I, I have my keys in here. I got stuff in here that I don't want to lose. You know, like there's nothing worse than coming out of the forest and you've been out for like five, six hours and realizing, hey, not sure where my keys are at. So yeah, got a bunch of other stuff in here, including uh, camera gear and related items. So in order to actually check out the frame, I would have to remove the bag completely, which is not happening. But basically this is made of titanium, weighs in at a couple pounds. 
and is capable of supporting 250 pounds. That's what it's tested at, and I would imagine it can probably carry a lot more, but what's nice with this frame is that it's modular, so it's interchangeable with other um, XO Mountain Gear packs, so you can easily switch it out and you don't actually have to change the frame, which makes that really cool because they have different size packs and all that kind of good stuff. But anyways, that's a K2 titanium frame. And something else I want to point out here is how this shoulder harness is attached. So, you know, you can move this around, which is great. It's easily adjustable, which I've never actually seen this set up before on a pack. And then it's attached down here via Velcro. So, you know, depending on your height and your comfort and how you want to run this pack, if, if you want it to run a little bit higher on your back or lower, Boom, right there you got your adjustment point. So that's pretty unique. I've never seen that in the pack. And then of course, guys, XO Mountain Gear is made in the good old US of A. Can't go wrong with that, Boise, Idaho. Another cool feature about this pack, guys, which I really like, is check out these, these button snaps. You can buy from their website a dry bag that snaps in here and then you transform your entire pack into a dry bag. So you don't need any more rain cover, stuff whatever you want in there and you're good to go. So moving on to the front of the pack, I just want to show you guys these heavy duty compression straps which are enabling me to strap my smock on here plus my, uh, well, what do we got in here? Ah, yes, my Veshma Shock backpack. So I figured this is a good idea to run this when I'm not using the primary bag. But I got that wrapped up here in my tarp and all this just strapped down here, undo them and they just fall right off, revealing the actual pack itself, right? So we got, access to the main compartment right here via this heavy duty stormproof zipper and you see all the good stuff I got in there, sleeping bag, clothes, tools, um, mattress and you know, what have you, the entire sleep system. And then here on this side, this zipper is just big open pocket right here, you know, so I got ed edible plants guide here trying to just uh you know it's good to know exactly like what's in your area and what and what you can eat especially around summertime these are obvious right <laughs> it's like a buffet out here i love it but anyways um also decided to throw some seeds in here thanks to one of you guys recommendation i've no no idea but this is around the season for lettuce and carrots so figured i'd toss those in the bag and give that a go as i build that shelter that you guys have seen the beginnings of all around you see lots of heavy duty hardware, quality, lots and lots of quality. This frame is designed to accommodate over 250 pounds, which I doubt you'll ever carry that much with it, but I mean, it is, it is made to carry a load. I mean, look at these straps. So thick, so cushy, so nice and padded. And also, one thing to mention is this entire pack itself is detachable from the frame and swaps out with any other XO mount packs, make, making it completely modular. You can go bigger, you can go smaller, whatever. Also, this is, this is Velcro right here, completely removable. And then, gosh, guys, I mean, there's just, it's just an awesome pack. Of course, as you would expect, a sternum strap. There's a little um, retainer for the uh, hydration hose micro adjust right here to pull the pack nice and tight up high on your back and then finally down here look at that lumbar support i don't know how, how deep that is off him but i'm telling you that's deep and <laughs> i hiked two miles out here with this and i <laughs> i felt nothing i thought i was carrying like 20 pounds also a good point to mention is you can attach different things on here some of their accessories it is velcro on the inside so you know some sort of velcro compatible pouches with a strap would be a good fit here first up guys is my pellet gun now i kind of debated should i bring a bow should i bring slingshot you know what should i bring out here keeping in mind that i want to be able to obviously kill something while I'm out here, squirrel, whatever. I went ahead and left the bow at home because I thought, you know, that's just that's just out of my league right now. I can use this much easier as an amateur and a complete noob than I can with that bow. And I can be a lot more effective than this. Granted, I can't get big game, but I can definitely get small stuff that can sustain me for um, periods of time. So anyways, 22 pellet gun, good to go. New addition to the cook set is it's Scandinavian style carved, and I believe this one actually came from Finland 
least that's what Amazon said. Who knows? But anyways, it's nice. I just hang it off my pack, and it's not shiny like some of the other cups I have, so it kind of blends in, which I like. I found this company called Uber Lieben on Amazon. Where else? And so I have their fire steel, and I picked up their flat pack stove because it's nice and obviously flat. And I figure in this type of situation, although I was tempted to bring, you know, like a gas burner type of stove or some, something along those lines, this stove is going to be more sustainable long term because it burns wood and it takes up no space. So I like this. Go check them out on Amazon. It's called uh, Uber Lieben. Ah, uh, yes, of course, the hatchet, right? I was, I was impressed how it did with that uh, red cedar. I would have kept going, but honestly, like I said, I just, I didn't want to make noise, but weighs in at one pound, under 30 bucks, and very effective. So I'm really liking this a lot. This is the first time I've actually purchased a dedicated hatchet. No bag can be complete without the Silky Pocket Boy. This thing is so effective. As long as you know how to use it right, it will serve you very well. It took a little learning and a broken blade for me to figure it out, but um, just, um, just in a super, super effective folding saw so something i've just kind of put together myself is a toolkit of things i use most commonly so i got this exotac container right here it's waterproof it has tinder in it and matches then um, my mht leatherman multi-tool flashlight and then uber lieben fire steel which is good for like 25,000 strikes and then on this side i got a strap to make my own slingshot n95 mask uh, my Gerber tactical pin and a Kim light. So, just kind of like a multi purpose thing. Oh, yeah, and also threw in this knot tying card. So, I'm of the opinion that your bug out bag, your inch bag, whatever, you have to have a stainless steel canteen. You cannot live without it. It's one of those vital pieces of the gear. Yeah, it's good stuff. This is um, part of the Pathfinder cook set. So you guys might want to go check that out. Familiar with David Canterbury? Figure, self-reliant outfitters. Good stuff. So I do have a little bit of time before the sun goes down. So I just want to talk about inch, all right? The concept of I'm never coming home. So first of all, in my mind, you have to define why you wouldn't be coming home. So, you know, let's say maybe you just need to get in touch with your, you know, your inner being and your inner spirit and you feel like you need to go wander the forest for the next uh, 40 years or, you know, whatever, right? So that is, you know, free choice, free will. The other one is uh, maybe you've uh, <laughs> not exactly been a good citizen, right? Maybe you've been out, uh, I don't know, bombing abortion clinics like Eric Rudolph or um, something that is um, causing the system, causing the justice system to want to chase you down and capture you and lock you up in Fed Max. So you're fleeing to the forest to avoid that, right? Another scenario could easily be war, right? You're forced out of the urban area in which you live and um, maybe you're being hunted, you know? Maybe it's one of those ethnic type of conflicts and you have to flee to the forest. Now, another scenario that is, you know, quite possible is some sort of, you know, hardcore global grid down or nationwide grid down event where, you know, infrastructure is just totally destroyed you know the cities are chaos and all that kind of good stuff and you have to legitimately flee to the wilderness so you know those are a few scenarios that go through my mind i'm sure you guys can think of some more but those are kind of like the high level ones right now how are you how are you going to make this a successful situation right because you're probably like me you're probably your average soft coddled first world okay as much as i come out here and hike as much as i go to the gym i don't know the hardships of living out in the forest for extended periods of time so you have to take that into consideration first of all and understand that if you are going to build an inch bag with the concept of i'm never coming home and i'm going to the forest to survive or kind of straddling the urban versus forest environments you have to have somewhere to go. Like it makes a good idea to have at least somewhere plotted out to go. Maybe you at least built a primitive shelter there. There's a water supply. Maybe you have a cache there or two, some redundancy built in. And that makes the whole concept of I'm never coming home a lot more feasible versus like, hey, I think I can fit everything I need forever in one bag, which obviously makes no fucking sense unless you are like smoking meth on a regular basis. So I know you guys are doing that and neither am I. So. The best thing to do with the inch bag is have somewhere to go, have a destination in mind, and have an actual um, 
plan in place, right? Obviously, you'd want to hopefully drive there, right? You know, the concept I think a lot of people that have in their heads of, you know, with this bag and the pack and, you know, having to walk and travel in that fashion to wherever they're headed. And quite honestly, that would suck really bad. So if I ever have to hit the road and never come home, I'm driving to the edge of a certain national forest, um, hiding my vehicle and, you know, boots to the ground from there. So like anything else in life, guys, you gotta be reasonable with your plans. If you're new to prepping and you're new to survivalism, building out an inch bag probably doesn't make sense. You wanna focus on your everyday carry gear and that 24 hour kit and then your bug out bag and your food supplies of the house. But let's just say nothing happens, right? And you never have to, you're, you're, you're never forced to flee to the wilderness. Well, a bag like this is perfect for through hiking, long range back country trips, and also hunting. This is um, specifically designed for hunters and it hauls meat in an incredible fashion. So um, you can still use this bag, right? I mean, it's not like it just has to like sit in the corner because like the world isn't burning down. So that's a cool thing about doing this bag and doing this build out. And um, overall, I gotta tell you guys, probably the best part of doing this and just filming in general and being a YouTuber is engagement with you guys. I've learned so much, like those seeds, for example. You know, I never thought of like bringing seeds out, but hey, it makes perfect sense. So I had to do my research, find out what things I could plant in this area, what a good time of season it was to plant, you know, lettuce and carrots and all that kind of good stuff. So um, engagement with you guys is probably the best part of being a YouTuber. So you know the deal, guys. Just hit me up in those comments with your thoughts, suggestions, all that kind of good stuff, um, how you feel about the whole inch bag concept. And um, yeah, I guess that's about all I got, except for this video is sponsored by the Warrior Tribe. Link down there in the description. I've talked about them before. They are a collection of people who, um, you know, we're talking preppers, survivalists, you name it, and just um, people in general who want to better themselves in areas of survivalism, in their health, in their mental well being, in their relationships, you name it. Basically, a crew that you guys would like to hang out with. So check that link down there in the description. And that's all I got. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot for watching.